So the last time we, it was about a week ago, I um, showed all the engines and stuff that I got at the, uh, or the, my brother and I got at the train show, or not train show, the train store in Cedar Falls, and um, since then I have worked on a lot of the engines. Um, I said last time I was going to um, do a video testing all the engines, and I never really got around to it, so we're going to do that now. Um, I'll start off with the ones that are, I guess, not running, I guess. Um, this is the Lionel one, you probably remember all these. Um, it's got a shorted motor, um, so I'm going to replace it. I ordered some on uh, eBay, some of the cheap 5-pole motors, but they won't be here for probably another, oh, I don't know, hard telling when it'll be here, but um, I'm going to put a new motor in that, and it'll probably run just fine. I got a new belt for it, as it was um, had a slipping belt um, for the drive since it's a belt drive engine. Um, this one, I don't remember if I showed this one on the last one, I might have forgotten, but this is a Bachman um, Spectrum 484. It's got all the parts, um, it's, been, it's disassembled. Um, I haven't really gotten around to working on it yet. Um, there's something with it where the, um, the motor's not picking up power from the track so it doesn't run. And the other one that isn't running is this one. This is the little 4 or 040 switcher. Um, it's got a cracked drive gear. Um, it's got the brass gear, and then it's got the plastic one that's on the uh, actual wheels. The plastic one is cracked, and it's preventing the engine from um, rotating the wheels all the way. So that one's not running. Then if I go to my brother's workbench, I've, he's got the motor for one of the little switchers, and there's the wheels for it and um, all the other parts there somewhere but um, in here actually there are all the parts there's two of the little diesel switchers like the yellow one that I got like um, that one there they're exactly the same and they're both kits he hasn't finished putting them together yet but um, now we'll get a we'll get on to running all the uh, engines that actually do run the first one is this it's a 280 consolidation I think it's a Bowser kit or something but it runs not too bad. It needs some work still, as it's starting to um, be kind of wobbly when it runs. Didn't do that before, but have to take a look at it. There, it's running smoother. Not very fast. That was about 50%, but it runs really nice, and it's a nice heavy engine. Here's that Proto 2000 DL109 um, Santa Fe one. It runes good. It's got a Digitrax decoder in it. I'm programmed to number 50 is what it said, but I don't have it, uh, making weird noises, so I'll probably have to oil that one. Here's that little diesel switcher. Um, I still need to gauge the wheels, but the motor in it works, so, um, it's not much to that. So here's the base, and, um, wheels and everything for the 210 um, brass steam engine. Um, somebody at some point has replaced the probably original 5-pole motor with a newer 3-pole motor. Um, it's not as good of a motor, I guess. Um, it's it's okay size, it's not very big and probably not very powerful, but um, I had to take off the drive rods because they were pretty broken, um, or the little auxiliary driving rods, but it runs did yeah it popped the breaker still gonna have to work on that one because it's still got a lot of issues as most of the brass engines usually do so that one's gonna be a project speaking of big projects here's the brass daylight I don't know if it's like a gem models or something but it does run not very well but it does run which is better than um, when it started because it didn't run at all. I'm gonna have to figure out because there's something wrong with the drive system um, or with the contacts that keeps kind of cutting out and the um, tender draw bar I need to fix it so because I just put a temporary one on there so um, that's also gonna be a big project. There's the little Jeep and it does run. Pretty much all of these engines didn't run at all when I got them except for a couple but this one didn't really run either, so I got it running pretty good. I had to glue a gear on it because it was slipping, and the motor and everything, everything was just dirty. So, got it running. 
Here's both of the little Marks diesels. These didn't really run very well either when we got them, but now they both run pretty good. The black one takes a little less current, I think. Or a little bit faster, but they're both really nice and they both run really good. Here's the little lifelike uh, 040 steam engine. This one was a pain to put back, put the wheels back on because since it's got gears going to all the wheels, you had to um, have the wheels perfectly aligned in order to actually get it to run okay. But it runs pretty good. It's got a light on it, and it's pretty quiet. It's a lifelike. They're pretty reliable, so it runs good. It's a nice looking engine too. Here's that little Mantua 060. This is probably the smoothest running Mantua engine that I've got. It's very smooth and quiet and it does a good low speed for something that's as old as it. But it's nice and quiet when it goes forwards. And it's nice and smooth, nice and heavy so it can haul a lot of cars. And that one was really nice. It was the first one I worked on and it sure set the mood. I really enjoyed it because it runs so nice. Now here's a very curious one. This was the uh, this is that Aristocraft uh, ten wheeler steam engine. So none of the wheels on the tender were attached, and the engine um, when I tested it the first time it didn't move and it just uh, blew the breaker on my transformer. Said so since this transformer actually has a manual circuit breaker, if something if a short circuit is detected, it blows um, turns off the transformer and then you have to press the reset button. And that's basically what. Uh, happened with that engine it didn't do anything and um, I thought it was shorted but it see it turned out I think the motor was just stuck or something because it seems to um, run not too bad well it still needs work once it warms up it gets better but we'll run it around the whole way it's a lot better than when I started because it probably hadn't run for a long time And it's just such a nice looking engine. I really like the Aristocraft stuff. Now this was the most expensive expensive engine. This is the Riverossi Streamlined Hudson, um, the New York Central one. The Dreyfus Hudson, I guess is what they call it. This was 50 bucks. I didn't think it was too bad of a deal. Um, she gave me like 20 bucks off of it anyway. So, And it runs good. Um, good runner. Has a light. Um, needs a new sticker or needs new decals on it because somebody's replaced um, or somebody's painted over like the New York Central logos and all the uh, um, where the uh, logos and stuff used to be the road number and then they decided to take it off by using probably a knife or a screwdriver or something because they scratched quite a bit out of it and um, it's gonna need some work to get it looking good again but it runs good and it's a uh, streamlined Hudson which is always nice so then, um, this is that RSO steam engine. This was in pieces when, um, in just a bag. So it's missing the screw for the front, um, of the boiler, and it's also missing the, uh, pistons. So I took the, uh, main drive rods off to, uh, make it be able to run. So it's just got the, the bar on the, uh, wheels because, um, it would have caught, it has all the drive rods. It's just, I've got them over here. It's just, I had to take them off in order to get it to run. And ironically, this is probably the one that I've run the most out of all the engines that I've got because it just runs so nice and smooth. On switches, a lot of these engines, I think the switches need to be cleaned or something, but... This one I've run for hours so far. It runs really nice and smooth. Now here's that Mahano Illinois Central SD40-2. Other than this, other than the uh, DL109 and the... Uh, Dreyfus Hudson, this was the only other one that didn't need any work to actually get it running. Um, it ran perfectly fine in the beginning. All the other ones did need work to get them going. But this one runs nice and smooth. All the Mahano engines I've ever encountered seem to run pretty good. I've only got two of them because you don't really see them that often, at least where I am. Last of the HO engines are th is this uh, Mantua um, F unit. It's a Santa Fe one. It was two dollars, and um, the motor's in pretty bad shape. It needs a new set of brushes, but it does run not very well. But it needs um, it needs work. But it was two bucks, so you can't really say too much about that. For now, the end scale layout's under the table. But here's that end scale um, lifelike Union Pacific F unit. This one runs really nicely. 
nice and smooth. It's been the one that I've run the most out of all of them, I'd say. Nice and smooth. Pulls a good train, too. Really like it. So this is a Burlington um, GP9. It's an Atlas, I think. It runs pretty good, too. Um, probably the fanciest one out of all of them. Doesn't really like the crossover, but or the uh, crossing, but we can work with it. Here's the little Bachman Baltimore and Ohio 040 Dockside Switcher. This one I painted the drive rods on and um, got the motor running good. And it runs pretty good. It looks a lot better with the silver drive rods now because they used to be just black. Um, like a lot of the Bachman engines with the plastic drive rods are. Here's the Atlas uh, at Seaboard Coastline RS1 or RS2 or 3 or something. I don't know what it is, but it runs... Um, it needs some new uh, traction tires because it's only got two wheel drive out of the six um, But it runs good Here's the great northern one um, this one the shell doesn't stay on it still, but it runs pretty good got a flywheel in it So it travels for a long time after you um, shut it off Then the last one is this this is the Bachman Jupiter um, the 440 General or the Jupiter or something. This one, when you start it, it takes off. There's no speed control really on it. That's as slow as I can get it to go with at least the controller that I've got hooked up to this, which is an old N scale transformer. But this one needed oil, um, but it actually runs pretty good. And it's a really nice looking engine too. So that's everything so far, at least. Um, I'll have to update again after I get some more of these engines running, and I'll post updates after um, after a while. Um, any engines that I need to get running, and um, just general updates about the layout, other projects, engines, um, O-scale stuff, N-scale, any of the engines. So I think that's all for now. Um, don't forget to subscribe. If you can figure out what the... Uh, 210 where the brass uh, daylight are leave it in the comments because I'd like to know and I'll see you next time